Where are the Bradley girls? A missing persons vigil has taken place and the girls whereabouts are still unknown. But there are three things that I find puzzling. A meager $30,000 reward for their return, the supervision or lack thereof on July 6, 2001, and why there are no leads whatsoever on Tianda and Diamond Bradley. Vigils are comforting, but I would much rather have the Bradley girls back where they belong. Call tonight and express your opinion at 630-575-TALK. Gerard McClendon Live starts in 15 seconds. Welcome to Gerard McClendon Live. Missing and exploited children shouldn't even be in our conversation tonight, but the Bradley girls, Tianda and Diamond, have been missing since July of 2001. Why are there no leads? Are the family and FBI clueless? What's up with the meager $30,000 reward? If my girls were missing, I would shut down the subway, shut down the L, the Dan Ryan and Lakeshore Drive, and please get that reward up to at least $100,000. Joining us by telephone right now is the aunt of the girls, Sheila Smith. Sheila, how are you this evening? I'm pretty good. Thank you very much for having us on your show, too. You know, Sheila, I appreciate you coming on the show. I understand there's a vigil tonight. Could you explain why these vigils are taking place? Well, um, as you had mentioned, Tiana and Diamond has been missing since July 6th of 2001. And today marks the eighth year of their disappearance. And these vigils will continue, hopefully not too much longer, because someone will call in that tip needed to help us find Tiana and Diamond. Yeah, Sheila, is there still hope? Talk to me. And if, if you have hope, why? Why do you still believe? Well, uh, you know, as time goes on, sometimes hope does have a, have a way of dwindling. Mm. But in my heart, I believe that they're still alive. Mm. And until I find bodies, or see some evidence that they're not alive, then this is what my family choose to believe. And that's what we're going to believe. And that's why we're going to remain vigilant until we get answers. Yeah. As the aunt, what is your involvement with the search? What have you been doing? Well, um, early on when they first got missing, um, I stepped up, I took control of of making sure that their names and their faces stay in the media. I'm the, the family spokesperson. I try to make the most sound decisions in terms of, you know, topics, and um, I maintain all of the uh, websites, well, our personal website, and I make sure that their information is out on Facebook, MySpace, uh, YouTube, and just all over the planet because it's important that their faces stay in the media. Sheila, remind us of the website URL address. I, I did go to it today, but just tell my audience. Well, the website address is www.findtiandandiamond.com. But um, anyone could just Google in Tianda Bradley, Diamond Bradley, or just any tags about them. They will lead them to our website, which happens to be the, the first listed on most of the searches. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time you saw the girls, Sheila? Of course, July 6, 2001 was the last day anyone uh, had seen the girls. But when was the last time you saw them? Um, I, I last um, visually seeing Tianda and Diamond, which was after a repassing of my brother in 2001. Mm. Mm. And on that day, you know, some of the older family members, they had left to, you know, go uh, elsewhere. And um, I had said to um, Tianda, I said, Tianda, are you going to dance for me? And she put um, a soundtrack on and she danced and, and you know she would often do that for me when, whenever I was visiting Chicago you know and mm. and I would just say Tianda dance for me and she never ever you know shied back she would just say okay I'll dance and then I'll say okay one more time and she'll dance again yeah. but Diamond was peeping at me from around the corner because she was not that familiar with me being her <laughs> age and so I think come here and she would like just run in the back of the house and that's the last time I physically seen my grandnieces but I often talk to Tianda. Mm, mm, of course uh, Tianda being the older sister and and uh, 
Diamond being the younger sister. You know, it's a very sensitive subject. Of course, um, Tracy took a polygraph years ago. She, she was never a suspect, but people considered her a person of interest. Do you think that there's any foul play within the family, Sheila? Well, you know, um, I'm just one of them type of people. I just say it the way I see it, and I call it. I don't care who don't like it or, or who approve or disapprove. I have had reservations myself um, in terms of the circumstances about their disappearance. You know, because, I mean, I even camped out over there for that first two weeks that, that they were missing, starting from 9 p.m. at night to 9 a.m., and, and I watched the behaviors of the neighbors in the community. I can't see this as being, quote, unquote, just a random act. You know, somebody happened to see two kids outside and take them. Mm. I, I mean, I don't see that. Wow. But at the same time, as you stated, Tracy passed the polygraph test. And for that matter, let me introduce the fact that George, uh, which is Diamond's dad, he was he and Tracy were, were the last two to have seen those children mm. in the house. Mm. So he passed. I believe he passed. I'm not sure that um, he was questioned by police. But uh, in my opinion, something is just not right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Something is not right. I hear you. Sheila Smith, I really appreciate you being on the show, the aunt of the two girls, Tianda and, and Diamond Bradley. You know, I hope that now we can up this reward. $30,000 just isn't enough, Sheila. Well, unfortunately, you know, it's sad to say, and I'm not trying to turn this into anything racial, mm -hmm. but when Kaylee Anthony got missing. There were hundreds of thousands of dollars. There was community out for. Yeah. They uh, labeled her the uh, um, America's Angel. When you got, you know, people like Tiana and Diamond, you got um, the little um, Lewis Cow. Yeah. You got hundreds and thousands of black and, and minority children missing, and it's yeah. almost like no one really cares. And that's one reason why I'm so vigilant to make sure that they stay in the media. And I do have a petition going demanding that these minority children, as well as runaways, mm. get more media coverage. Yeah, that's for real. That's for real. Sheila Smith, the great aunt of Tianda and Diamond Bradley, thanks for being on Gerard McClendon Live. We appreciate you. You're in our prayers. We're discussing Tianda and Diamond Bradley. Stay with me as we try to make sense out of the two girls missing since July 2001. Call me, 630-575-TALK. What do you think? Gerard McClendon Live, back in a moment. We're not giving up. As long as I got that man upstairs and I got, and I got these people in my support and my kids and children and family and friends, they ain't, gonna, they ain't giving up. They ain't going nowhere. Welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. That was the mother, Tracy Bradley. It's been eight years since anyone has seen Tianda and Diamond Bradley. It's time to get aggressive, everyone. $30,000, a few flyers, and a website. It just won't cut it. Is the investigation still open? Give me a call, 630-575-TALK. That's the number. I'm going to go to CLTV.com and some Facebook comments shortly, but I'm going to go straight to the phones right now. Let's go to Ethel. Ethel, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment, Ethel? Hi, Ethel, what's your comment? Let's see, let me go to Mark next. Mark, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. Mark, what is your comment? Ethel, what is your comment? My comment, can you hear me? Yes, Ethel, what is your okay. comment? Okay, my comment is that the reward money, like you said, is not enough. But the aunt Sheila said that she don't want to play the race card, but you can't play the race card unless you Michael Jordan or Shaquille O'Neal. Black people ain't got $150,000 like some of the white people got. Mm. We don't have that much money. Hey, but check it out. out. But check it out, Ethel. There's a lot of white people that don't have $150,000 either. So you know what? Maybe this is a class issue. 
issue as opposed right. to just a color issue. Right, right. That's what I meant to say. I didn't know how to word it. Yeah. But the polygraph test, I'm sorry, and this is just my opinion, don't mean anything to me. Mm. The unsaid is just not a random. Somebody didn't just see these two girls and pick them up. Ooh. Something is wrong with this case. Something yeah. is real seriously wrong. The parents need to be brought back in again. The entire mm. family, they need to be questioned. They need, uh, they need to get down on them because something is wrong. Wow. Ethel, thanks for the call. I appreciate you calling Gerard McClendon live. You know, I question this as well. I question the reward money. I question the supervision of the children on that morning. A 10-year-old and a 3-year-old vanishing. Let me go to Mark. Mark, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon live. Mark, what's your comment? Mark, Mark Allen, how are you, man? All right, pretty good. Listen, this, this thing reminds me of even the young 9-year-old girl that was found over there on 84th Street that it was a big issue, and now a few months later, the pain and suffering in our community goes on so much that some of these things become out of sight, out of mind. That's unfortunate. But I do want to raise this because no, 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 no lead can go on turn, but I was on the corner of 43rd and State at the gas station, and I'm listening to some of the people in the neighborhood saying, that, that, that one of the Bradley daughters was fathered by the gentleman who owned a grocery store that was right on that corner. Okay. And now he disappeared the same day. Oh, okay. Well, 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 Mark, let's be careful with hearsay now. Well, you, we, you well, 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 Mark, make your comment, but you got to, well, hey, whoa, you got to watch the hearsay, man. I mean, let's talk about whether the reward money should be higher and whether there's some speculation of some family members being The in reward question. money should be higher and people should listen more to people on the street who know my love a lot more than we would know. Yeah, that's for real. That's I'll for put real. it that way. Okay, that'll work. Okay. Mark, thanks for the call, man. We appreciate you. Let me go to Sarah next. Sarah, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. What's your comment? Hi, uh, Gerard. This is Sarah. Listen, you know what? I, I worked in the city for 20 years. And, and I am white, mm -hmm. okay? And I agree that something's fishy, that when they found that originally, mm -hmm. they said that there was a receipt found for black garbage bags and a Home Depot receipt mm -hmm. in the very beginning when the news came out years ago. Nobody ever investigated it further. Mm -hmm. Whose receipt was it? Who purchased the stuff? Mm -hmm. Where did it all come from? Mm. Where did those children go? And I agree with, with Ethel and you 100%. The children were not being supervised. Mm. I have a 10-year-old little girl, and she don't go out of the house unless I'm right behind her. Yeah, that's for real. And it, and it doesn't matter color. Any child should be worth a million because all of them are a gift from God. Yes. Hey, Sarah, thanks for the call. We appreciate you. That's the bottom line. Precious. Priceless miracles, human beings, vanishing in thin air? You gotta be kidding me. Hey, stay with me as we try to make sense out of two girls missing since July 2001. Hit me on Facebook at Gerard McClendon. Hit me on Twitter at Gerard MC, MySpace at Gerard McClendon, and CLTV.com slash GML 630-575-TALK. Gerard McClendon Live continues two minutes. It's never a sleeping moment. I haven't, well, yesterday was the first holiday that I really participated in, you know, in terms of being festive. Um, but all of the other holidays, it's just been sadness. I, I don't see Christmas. When they, when they come home, then we'll celebrate. Until then, there's just nothing we can do but hope and pray. Mm. That's Sheila Smith, the aunt of the missing girls. Two little girls still missing since July 2001. No way. But with over 150 children missing in the state of Illinois, we need to make a deal out of every child who vanishes into thin air. Somebody knows something. Welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. We're discussing Tianda and Diamond Bradley still missing. Call me, 630-575-TALK. I'm going to read something from CLTV.com slash GML. Daniel says, investigate the mother. She's hiding something. They had started to, to question her originally, but backed off due to scrutiny and community pressure. Lori says, these little girls live down the street from me. I can't believe it's been eight years. Let me go to the phones. I'm going to go to Bernetta. Bernetta, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment, Bernetta? Well, you know, I was just listening to what you just read. I really think that the mother needs to get investigated a little bit further. She knows something. The reward money is too low. No one was supervising those kids. I mean, they just disappeared, and the mom is in the news, but you can't see 
it doesn't look like a mother who's who doesn't know where her children are. This, mm. is look, this looks like a mother who is confused as to if they find out what happened, who might suffer the consequences of what happened. Yeah. It's just sad. Mm. It, she does not look like a grieving mother. Mm. She doesn't. Wow. Bernetta, thanks for the call. We appreciate you. Let me go to Vera next. Vera, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment, Vera? Hi, Vera. What's your comment? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I first of all want to agree with the last caller. I do not think that that mother is showing, uh, you know, to, to the mother Tracy, we're not hearing you, we're not feeling you. It is no way, I'm a mother of four, mm. it is no way that my children could be missing mm. and not everyone in the world not know me, not hear my story. So w once again, I think that this mother needs to be investigated and we really want to hear from you, Tracy. We want we want to hear your story, and we really want to help you if we can. Yeah. A $30,000 is not enough money. It's enough churches in our community. It's enough moms. It's enough people where we can get this um, mm. reward, reward money up to $100,000 easily. You know what? Hold tight, Vera. Stay right there. Vera, if, my two, if I had two little girls that were missing for the last eight years, I would sh I would pull a Tiananmen Square. I'd shut down Lakeshore Drive. I would stand out on the Dan Ryan. I'm like, somebody find my girls. Exactly. There's no way. There's no way possible. And I, yeah. I, I would do the same. Like I said, I have four. And yeah. if they were missing, you guys would know my face. Yeah. Yeah, that's for real. Vera, thanks for the call. We appreciate you. Let me go back to Facebook here. Stephanie says, Gerard, this one means a lot to me. So much nonsense was going on in Chicago back then. It's a shame they have not found these precious little girls. Benny says, Benny Jones says, if these girls had been a police officer's children or someone in, in the office, they would have been found by now. Just the same when an officer gets shot or killed. The person is found quickly. Hold tight. Let me give you a little bit of good news here. It's time for a little good news. Who's hiring? Pearson Education is seeking an account executive. If you have sales experience and a college degree, go to cltv.com slash GML for more details on this exciting career option. Stay with me for the V line and more calls as Gerard McClendon Live continues in two minutes. talking about Tianda and Diamond Bradley missing since July 6, 2001. I'm going to go straight to the phones. I'm going to Stacy. Stacy, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. What's your comment, Stacy? Hi, Stacy. What's your comment? My comment is that I... My comment... Hello? You're here. Hello? Talk, talk. You're here. Don't talk. I have a 19-year-old daughter, and she's missing for 24 hours. Come on, please talk. I was, I'm on the police. Mm. Yes. These girls been missing for eight years. I haven't seen their mother or anybody mm. on TV, news, or anything. The reward is low. It's 30000 not because of the mother. It's the mother. She can go to outreaches, anybody, to get that money. I haven't seen her on anything. She has two daughters missing. Woo, Stacy. thanks for the call. We appreciate you. You know, Stacy raises a good point in my blog earlier at CLTV.com slash GML. I thought it was outrageous for the reward to be $30,000. 30, you can't do anything with 30 grand. It should at least be $100,000. You got two precious babies that vanished July 6, 2001. 30K, I'm sorry, FBI, get on, get on, get on it. Police, get on it. The mother, please get on it. Let me get to Rich. Rich, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. Rich, talk to me. What's up, Gerard, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, hey, I mean, I'm a big fan of yours, me and my girl, man, and I like to say keep up the good work. I appreciate but that. But what I do want to say about uh, these two sisters that's missing is that, mm. you know, no one on the face of the earth would just vanish like that, just mm. come up missing. I mean, it's just impossible. Yeah. Okay, yes. for one. And for two, the lie detector test really don't mean nothing because it's, it's not admissible in the court of law, for one. You mm. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, even if she's telling the truth or she's lying, it's not like they can use it in court. Yeah. And like the other lady said, you haven't seen the mother or heard anything about the mother since 2001. I wow. mean, I know if I had, I don't have any kids, but if I had kids that were missing, believe me, like you said, I would be, uh, I mean, around on the other side of the world and back. Oh, big time. Trying to find my kids. Big time. Hey, Rich, thanks for the call. Let me get to Derek right quick. Derek, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment? Make it quick. Hello, my name is Derek. Look, I'm calling from the south side. I want to say this, that, that they had showed a videotape a while ago 
saying that the girls were spotted in the store, and her mother made a comment saying she don't want to see the videotape because she know that's not them. How do you know that those are not your daughters? The concerned parent would yeah. jump the gun quick. Like, let me go see if these are yeah. my kids or that's not. That's right, that's right. But she made it like, you know, that she knew for a fact that they want her kids. Wow, Derek, thanks for the call. We appreciate you. I got one more Facebook comment. I grew up two blocks away from where these girls were kidnapped. That was a horrible summer. That was Russell Spellman. You know, we should always be sensitive to missing persons reports for Tianda and Diamond and the many others who inhabit the missing children investigations. Our prayers are with all families missing a loved one, and my burden is keep the faith. Call me at 630-574-3232 right now to voice your thoughts. Keep your head up and always be encouraged.